on Dragonstone. The Targaryens, last of the Valyrian ruling families, became a major power in the Narrow Sea, controlling trade with the threat of Dragonfire until 2 BC, when Aegon Targaryen atop his dragon Balerion and his sister wives Visenya on Vagar and Rhaenys on Meraxis invaded the continent. By this time, Westeros was divided into seven kingdoms, known as the Kingdom of the North, the Kingdom of the Mountain and Vale, the Kingdom of the Isles and Rivers, the Kingdom of the Rock, the Kingdom of the Reach, the Kingdom of the Storm and Dorne. Defeating nearly every kingdom, Aegon was crowned King of Westeros and forged the Iron Throne from the swords of his defeated enemies. In the North, they remained under House Stark, as did the Vale under House Arryn and the Westerlands under House Lannister, while House Hor of the Kingdom of Isles and Rivers was destroyed, with their territory split into the Iron Islands, ruled by House Greyjoy, the Riverlands ruled by House Tully, and the Crownlands ruled by the King from the capital of King's Landing. Further south, the Targaryens destroyed House Gardner and so left their reach under House Tyrell, while House Durandon was defeated in the Stormlands, but lived on through their successors, as the new lord of the territory, Ori's Baratheon, best friend and rumored half-brother of King Aegon, married the daughter of the fallen Durandon king, in addition to adopting their sigil and house words. Yet while these mighty realms fell, the mixed Roinar and population of Dorne resisted under House Martell, fighting a brutal guerrilla war over the first decade of Aegon's rule, ultimately ending with the Conqueror admitting defeat and signing a peace treaty. Over the next three centuries, House Targaryen ruled the continent of Westeros, with some of their kings acting as absolute monarchs through the overwhelming might of their dragons. Though these rulers varied in wisdom and aptitude for the position, one of the most notable of Aegon's descendants was King Jaehaerys the Conciliator, who ended two civil wars to preside over a golden age of peace and prosperity. Unfortunately, his descendants squandered these accomplishments, and the realm was torn apart in the dents of the Dragon Civil War, fought from 129 to 131 AC. A vicious conflict between the chosen heir, Rhaenyra Targaryen, and her younger brother Aegon, who claimed the crown against his father's wishes, but was backed by tradition and precedent, which favored male heirs. The conflict not only killed thousands, but also wiped out nearly all the dragons, leading to their eventual extinction and a significant loss in power and prestige for House Targaryen. Even so, the descendants of Valyria continued to rule for many years, with Darren the Good standing out as another exceptional king, able to bring Dorne into the realm through a marriage alliance and win a civil war against his half-brother Daemon Blackfire. For many of these years, Darren the Good was aided by his loyal half-brother Brynden Rivers, nicknamed Bloodraven, serving as Hand of the King, the second most powerful position in the realm, but he eventually ended up as Lord Commander of the Night's Watch until he disappeared during a ranging beyond the wall. Over the next few decades, House Targaryen continued to defend their throne against House Blackfire, but won all five wars until their enemies were seemingly destroyed, though in truth they survived through the female line. The last great Targaryen king to rule, Aegon V, had a fascinating life. As he was so far down the line of succession, no one expected him to take the throne, and so was allowed more freedom in his youth, serving as a squire to the hedge knight Sir Duncan the Tall. As a result of traveling across the continent and getting to know the small folk, he became their advocate as king, earning love from commoners and hatred from the nobility threatened by his reforms. Yet Aegon V's reign was cut short when he died in a failed attempt to hatch dragon eggs, causing a terrible fire which killed the king and many others. Yet while these notable kings performed great deeds worthy of praise, their dynasty ultimately met its end under Mad King Aerys II, a cruel, incompetent monarch whose son and heir, Rhaegar Targaryen, disappeared with Lyanna Stark, a daughter of House Stark betrothed to Lord Robert Baratheon of the Stormlands. Believing her kidnapped, House Baratheon of the Stormlands allied with House Stark of the North, House Aerys of the Vale, and House Tully of the Riverlands to fight a rebellion which defeated and deposed House Targaryen. After the death of Rhaegar in combat, and Ares II by his Kingsguard, Sir Jaime Lannister, Robert Baratheon was crowned King of Westeros, presiding over 15 years of relative peace through his personal ferocity as a warrior, in addition to the strength of his alliances. Unfortunately for the Starks, Lyanna died in Dorne, while the Targaryens were almost entirely wiped out, save for young Viserys and Daenerys Targaryen, the youngest children of the Mad King who escaped to Essos. Years of poverty and struggle turned Viserys into a foolish, impulsive young man, but he never gave up the goal of retaking the Iron Throne, finally finding an opportunity when his ally Illyrio Mopatis of Pentos arranged for his sister Daenerys to marry Khal Drogo, a powerful Dothraki horse lord they hoped would invade Westeros for the Targaryens. Meanwhile, in the far north of Westeros, White Walkers were spotted for the first time in thousands of years. It was at this point the A Song of Ice and Fire series began in 297 AC. After years of peace, the realm was torn apart when political scheming and greedy ambition led to the assassination of the Hand of the King, John Arryn, followed by the death of King Robert Baratheon and execution of Lord Eddard Stark, three longtime friends whose alliance maintained stability in the Seven Kingdoms. 
Yet now with all three gone, chaos erupted, allowing House Lannister of the Westerlands to take direct control over the Iron Throne through Joffrey Baratheon, the eldest son and heir of Robert Baratheon, and his wife Cersei Lannister, though in reality, all three of their children were fathered by Jaime Lannister, the Queen's twin brother and lover. As both John Arryn and Eddard Stark uncovered the secret before their deaths, word had spread, allowing for various claimants to rise, like King Stannis Baratheon, Robert's eldest living brother, and the Lord of Dragonstone, who by tradition was the one true heir to the Iron Throne. Yet their younger sibling Renly also put forth a claim, as he was backed by the Stormlands, which he ruled, and the Reach through his allies in House Tyrell. Seeing the realm divided and weak, the Iron Islands declared independence under King Balon Greyjoy, while King Robb Stark of the North and Riverlands declared independence as well, gathering armies to wage war against the Lannisters in retaliation for their execution of Robb's father, Eddard Stark. The Vale, meanwhile, remained neutral, as did Southern Dorne. Known as the War of the Five Kings, this conflict devastated Westeros and killed thousands during a time when the White Walker threat grew larger in the North, with the pleas and warnings of the Night's Watch largely ignored. In the East, Viserys Targaryen was killed, but his sister Daenerys proved shrewd and fearsome, undergoing a great journey in metamorphosis from the property of her brother to the Khaleesi wife of a great call. Yet it was only after the death of her husband that her destiny truly revealed itself when she accidentally performed a magic ritual allowing three dragon eggs to hatch, thereby becoming the mother of dragons. With Viserion, Rhaegal, and Drogon by her side, Daenerys made her way to Slaver's Bay where she purchased an army of unsullied slave soldiers, eunuchs who drank an elixir which lessened pain and trained their whole lives for combat. Knowing what it was to be a slave, Daenerys liberated her army and asked them to fight as freedmen, launching a campaign to end slavery in the region, conquering Astapor, Yunkai, and Meereen where she ruled as queen. Yet despite her best intentions, both Yunkai and Astapor rebelled and gathered a great alliance to wage war against Daenerys. Back in Westeros, as the war progressed, nearly every claimant king was killed, with Renly defeated by Stannis who took the Stormlands, while the Reach went to the Lannisters in the capital, though they also lost a king, when the volatile Joffrey Baratheon was assassinated, allowing for the succession of his younger brother Tommen. In the Iron Islands, Balon fell from a bridge, likely assassinated by his younger brother Euron Greyjoy, who succeeded as king before leading a fleet east to marry an ally with Daenerys Targaryen. Though King Robb Stark never lost a battle, he ultimately made political mistakes, which led to his assassination and betrayal by houses Frey and Bolton, which took power in the Riverlands and North under the Lannisters in the capital. With enemy kings falling and the power of House Lannister and Tyrell behind him, Tommen Baratheon had great potential as king. Yet after the murder of his grandfather Tywin Lannister and great-uncle Kevin Lannister, the young monarch lost his most cunning and wise advisors, greatly weakening his chance of bringing stability to the realm. King Stannis, meanwhile, initially won the Stormlands with the aid of the Red Priestess Melisandre, a sorceress follower of R'hllor from Ashai who believed Stannis was Azor Ahai reborn. Yet he steadily lost power until making the drastic decision to retreat with his army to the Northern Wall, where they aided the Night's Watch against a massive army of wildlings invading the south to escape the White Walkers. Establishing a foothold at the Wall, Stannis then embarked on a campaign to conquer the North and take Winterfell from House Bolton. By 300 AC and the end of Book 5 in the A Song of Ice and Fire series, the remaining kings vying for the Iron Throne also faced several outside powers threatening the realm, not only from Daenerys Targaryen and Slaver's Bay, but also young Aegon Targaryen, yet another possible candidate supported by Illyrio Mopatis of Pentos, the mercenary Golden Company, and the former Westerosi spymaster Varys, who claimed this young man was the son of Rhaegar Targaryen and his wife Elia Martell that was supposedly killed during Robert's Rebellion but was actually smuggled away to Essos. Another threat to the realm came from the brilliant strategist Peter Baelish, also known as Littlefinger, who orchestrated many of the most consequential events of the war in order to facilitate his own rise to power, marrying and then killing Lady Lysa Arryn so he could have direct influence over her son Lord Robert Arryn, thereby controlling the entire Vale while still possessing further plans to expand his power. Then there were two branches of House Martell in Dorne who stayed out of the conflict thus far, while making their own plans in secret, with the Prince's faction seeking a marriage alliance with Daenerys Targaryen, while the Sand Snake nieces of the Prince wanted outright war against the Lannisters. Finally, there was Bran Stark, a younger child of Eddard Stark, who traveled north with a group of companions following prophetic dreams, until reaching the Cave of the Three-Eyed Crow, where some surviving children of the forest lived with Brynden Rivers, the brother of King Daron the Good, who survived the long years since his disappearance, and was now a decrepit old man whose body was intertwined with a weirwood tree. Yet he possessed great magical powers, teaching Bran green seeing and skin changing, so he could see the past and present through the eyes of heart trees across the continent, as well as enter the minds of humans and animals. Bran was training to become the new Three-Eyed Crow, as there was a larger destiny he must fulfill.
A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Barachado, Average Soul the Healer, Sir Rick Lone, and Kyle Blitzsword. If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click on the links below, or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.